What does that the point mean? What does that mean? Oh, no, it's on me. I got it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. Uh, today, we're painting up some master of magnetism himself, some Magneto. Um, some new X-Men just hit the, uh, or is hitting the stores, hit the stores. Um, BK, you can confirm on that. But we got those sweet X-Men coming out. Um, Colossus, Rogue, and Honey Badger in X-23. So I decided, I think we needed a new master of magnetism to take care of those pex pesky X-Men's. So let's kick it to the minicam. Are we dragging? Are we slagging? Let's get to this mini cam and start to p -p -p paint. So I've already painted up a magneto before. You can see here, a little side by side. Um, this magneto was done in uh, alternate costume with the black um, black undersuit, red cape, and magenta glow. Uh, so I thought I'd kick it uh, old school and do the uh, classic costume, <clears throat> the red and purple. Um, I went in and did some airbrushing this morning. I got in super early just to do that. And we're just going to start painting this fella up. Draw now. What's a magneto? That's the best line from those uh, those movies. I love that. What's a magneto? So we're gonna mix up a little blue, a little red. We're gonna make like a nice little purple, little purple. And we got some like preliminary shading going on here, but I just want to accentuate that with a little blending. What I did this morning is um, put in a layer of like a sort of a wine color. And then I came over the top with a um, brighter red to kind of accentuate it and build in those first shades. Now we just want to do what we always do, define, refine. Just bring in some more color and tonality to the overall piece. Uh, the, currently, we are Mad Viola. Um, currently, to take uh, precautions from the global pandemic, um, we don't have set days for individual IPs. Uh, so we have days where I come in, we have days where shit comes in. And then we s switch back and forth between the IPs. So Wednesdays are my days. Switch back between the games. So Wednesdays is uh, you get to join me in the intrepid summer. And then on Tuesdays, you get to join Schick in the Intrepid Summer on the board, running the show. And then hopefully we'll get back to uh, a more regular schedule soon enough. And then hopefully we get back to Thursday streams so we can do some games. Because it's been a while since we've got to play some games on stream. And I know, I know I'm itching to get back to doing some games on stream. I'm sure Josh is. I want to kick that shadow a little bit stronger, do like a glaze. 
this color over top of that uh, start red is really kicking it up. Yeah, refine and define. That's what we do. I'm very much a sort of start big and work in sort of person. Uh, works for the way my brain works. Um, so, you know, kind of get like a big broad strokes. And then s work myself toward the gooey center of details. By putting a little bit of purple in there. And a nice tonality to the red. And there's a hint of magenta. So it's going to bring a lot of warmth and punch, much needed punch. Oh, I don't I don't know why my stream next why is my stream awkward? I don't know. Did I do something weird? Nope. It's cause I licked the brush, isn't it? It was like awkward, dude. I'm like, yeah, well, you know. It's how some of us paint. What do you want from me? Well, technically, I'm not getting paint on my brush that goes in my mouth. Like, you should not be doing that. If you can, if you can taste it, you're doing it wrong, kids. I got bad news for you. You're doing it wrong. His name is Magneto. He is so neato. Neato mosquito. I bet he eats burritos. It's probably true. Those are between all the all the magnetic tomfoolery Magneto gets up to. He still is a fellow that enjoys a good Taco Tuesday. So now I got like a little salmon color. And we're gonna go in there. And blend in some highlights. Or not, they can just be painted in. Just, like I said, we're refining, defining. Just trying to bring some accent points to the measure.
I'm just gonna keep working that paint. So this is definitely a little not table topping today. Hopefully everybody's okay with that. I'll sing you the song about Magneto Man. I'll sing you that song tonight. I'm just going to keep going. Refine, define. Blend it out a little tight, subtle. You don't need to you don't need to punch it in in the first go with the brush. Sometimes you sometimes you want to lay it on there like twice, three times, just sort of build that color out. Just create that gentle transition. His name is Magneto, he eats a burrito, and then he goes out and causes some chaos and havoc. He's the Ginst General Striker. You know he's a fighter, cause his name is Magneto. Is the best Magneto cover of a comic the X Men number one Jim Lee? Like the the four issue Gatefold? Is that like the best Magneto cover? TK421, I think Magneto would pair with a vampire cow really nicely in my squad. You know what? I agree. 100%. 100%. Marvel team up. Magneto and Bessie. Josh is 100% Josh is in on this and we will never hear the end of it until we make it happen. It's just unfortunate. I don't. I don't think canonically Bessie was ever. I don't. I don't think Bessie was ever in the Brotherhood. Uh, yeah, Magneto's so cool, chick. He doesn't have to look at the five million X Men attacking him, because he's just like, bro, I'm Magneto. Don't you know? And they're like, oh, we better focus on you. And he's like, it doesn't matter. I'm still Magneto. That's just, that's just how powerful he is. Uh, best Magneto covers X-Men 304 with the holographic goodness of the night. Um, uh, Fritz, Fritz Gilman. Fritz Gilman. Um, yeah, that's a good one. I love those holographic covers that were in um, that little run. All those, they had the little corner holograph bit. Those were super, super, super awesome. Let's put a little magenta back in that highlight. Um, Dallas, how did you come up with the idea of this pose and the metal? Um, so I was just looking at a lot of, so like a lot of the posing is like looking up, looking at a lot of comic covers or like it always starts out with a conversation like because you want to start with like what's the memory right so I like getting a couple people together I love it when it's all together in a group and you can be like like okay Magneto what is he doing and 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 like just put people on the spot like what is Magneto doing so they immediately have to go in their head and envision the Magneto they see because that's going to give you like that that those moments that are so memorable and 
you can uh, you can start to like refine and define from that. Like you know, we we, re we refine and define when we're painting. We do that with all art. You know, even from concepts and posing to the sculpting. Right? It's you don't you don't just have an idea and it's done. You, you, you go, okay, so this is where we're at. Now where do we take it? You know, how do we explore this further? What if we push this? What if we do this? So everything is iterative, um, which is really, really nice. Um, it's the way I like to work. Um, kind of get a little free-flowing and just come up with ideas. And you got a deadline, so you got to sometimes stick to something, but... You got to have that time where you can start building in those ideas to grow and expand on the idea. So there's a lot of just like going, okay, what is Magneto doing? And we knew what Magneto needed to be up in the air. Um, and we knew he was going to be controlling some, you know, he's the master of magnetism. And... Um, then the idea of the constructs came about and it's just like well we're just gonna make some constructs so it's just it just keeps evolving and growing and that's the fun of it sometimes you look at it sometimes somebody goes oh this comic cover and then you go look at that comic cover and you're like that doesn't work in three-dimensional um you know it's a cool comic but a lot of comic covers don't work in three-dimensional space. Like once you start breaking it down, um, the arms are sometimes in an odd place. Or once you get it, or sometimes you even try it, and then you get it, um, you get that test sample, and you look at it, and you're like, that that just doesn't work, and it just looks awkward. So you know, it's time to go back and you know refine and define. Okay, explore something else like. Does this arm need to be tweaked? Does this leg need to be tweaked? Do you need to move the the head? Ah, uh, there was yesterday, Kelfry. Yeah, Shik did one yesterday. Painted up uh, some sweet little space shafts. True, true. So it's been a lot of fun, uh, like watching technology change over the years. Like I would have never thought, like, um, you know, when I first started paint managers, it'd be possible to, you know, join in a stream and be able to ask questions directly to those that work on the game. And it's it's pretty amazing that. Um, we live in a time where we can provide that sort of uh, space and opportunity for the community, right? Like, you know, back in the 90s, or heck, late 80s, uh, when I first started painting miniatures and stuff like that, like, if you were like, oh, and someday you're going to be able to, like, go and chat with your uh with the people that make the game i'd be like that's nuts you're pulling my leg sir and lo and behold here we are today where everybody can hang out and do a little painting and ask questions and you know it's I, I love that we're able to provide this and it's a lot of fun for us and you know of course hopefully hopefully you find it fun and enjoyable as well uh so many questions going on but shit, I want to hear about your underwears. Yeah, social media, streams, yep. Open channel communication. It's it's huge, right? It's you know, it's it's not just reading uh, you know, some design notes or you know something it's it's active and open and i think it's a it's it's wonderful that that's the age we live in like what a what a what a marvelous not no pun intended but totally intended um <laughs> i heard you chortle 
laughing at me. Anytime I can use the word marvelous, I'm totally, totally am. Um, um, what was I saying? I'm lost. I got, I got confuddled. Uh, updates on no, there's no updates on Magneto. I mean, the update on Magneto is there's new X Men loose, and they need to be put in their place by the master of magnetism, Magneto. Did we get out of control there? Sorry. There we go. I got trumpets coming from the other room. Summer gave me some trumpet blast. Burr, 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 burr. Burr, 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 burr. There's no real color. Um, like also, I don't. No one's really asked about. For the first time, Dallas has ever painted. No one's asked about recipes, because um, recipes are lies. Um, my paint pot is just a mess and just chaos. Um, my one at home is a true wreck. Um, I have painted probably six projects. I think six projects with the same paint palette and not changed paints and just been like, whatever, whatever's on that, whatever's on there is getting mixed and, and doing something. How do I paint red and not make it look pink? I'm going to tell you right now, right now. I'm going to tell you right now, right now. I am going to tell you right now, right now, this looks pink. Um, it's the way I kind of, it says gloves. I got to go to my reference. I need some uh, hold music. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 His gloves are purple. Um, I usually do um, my highlights into like a salmon or pink um, when I'm doing reds. And then I use layers and layers and layers of glazes. And glazes, if, if, you've, uh, if you've been paying attention to anything, um, Glazes are a super thin, translucent paint that acts sort of like a filter. Like, um, like if you go get your picture taken with your family and you got to do that silly look up to the left thing that the photographer always makes you do. Um, and they always pull out the cellophane that goes over the light. A glaze is like that. You, you're just kind of putting like a a glaze, a filter over top of the colors to change the fundamental overall hue. Um, so I bring it in super, super pink or super, super salmon. And then I go over with uh, the, um, then I go over it with the inks to bring that redness back. Like and then, but it tones everything back to red, not just the pink. It tones the shadows. It tones the mids. Everything gets get pulled back to pink. So that's kind of the way I do it. Mixing orange, yep, um, I do like that as well. It all Gwinnicles. It all depends on the. It all depends on what's going on. It all depends on. Uh, the project, it depends on what's on my, you know, we could just add a little orange right there. And we can, we can bring some orange into it. We can add a little red. We can do all kinds of things. The, the, the idea is you're, you're just trying to bring up the, uh, the value here and there and then use glazes. I do like the orange for certain types of reds. So just bringing in orange, uh, makes it, uh, a little more punchy, I guess. It depends on how you're doing it. Um, it all depends on, for me, it all depends on the red I'm trying to achieve. If I'm going to go pink or orange.
Layers upon layers upon layers. Yeah, I don't really do layers. I'm I'm not a layering person at all. Um, just not the way I paint. I prefer one or two quick blends and then a couple glazes. The glazes, so the glazing stuff sounds uh, extreme and tedious because um, I might paint something red with like a lot of blues and mid-tone reds and then I'll come in with my salmon or pink and then I'll do like 15 glazes of red ink. Um, but the fun thing is, is like glaze is so thin, it dries super, super, super fast. Um, so by the time I do the head and get down to the feet, the head's dry and I can just go again. Also, that's what blow dryers are for. Obviously, they're not for my head. Um, so you got to have a blow dryer and you can speed up the, that process of glazing. Um, makes it super, super quick. I'm going a little slow today. But I'm having fun and I'm trying to make this magneto look super cool. Just having a lot of fun painting him up, just putting in those little, we're going to kick up the highlight one more time. We're just going to do our little uh, scratches and dots, some little dot highlights. And like once I glaze over that, that won't be white any, any longer. We're going to bring that to uh, We're definitely going to bring that to red through the glazes. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. Accent the sweet abs. I mean, Dave Kidd sculpted these. Uh, these uh, wonderful Adonis ads, abs on uh, Magneto here. So we got to accentuate them. We got to punch them up. Now the helmet. Start bringing that in. So normally I wouldn't want like a hard line, but on, on metal, or because this is metal or reflective, I can do like hard line uh, highlights. And to create that more metallic sheeny look, like he's got some sort of uh, metallic -y helmet. I think that needs a little more red in there. Put like a little sub highlight on this side. I'm going to turn him upside down a little bit. Just put a couple different colors. In that helmet to kind of show that light is reflecting. Those are the best quads in MCP. Oh, release. That's so many questions. You left off the metal piece that goes over Max Show. You're going to add it. Yeah, I'm just going to add that on later. I just left it off for painting purposes, mainly for stream. Um, when I painted this one, I, I did glue it on. You can see where I sort of painted around it. I, I didn't perfectly do this. This is this is mine. This is for the tabletop. So I don't really care if I have any uh, funky, imperfect painting going on. Um, he's a little dusty. Um, so I just glued that on and just let whatever happened happen. My brush can't reach it. You can't see it. Um, but for a stream, I went ahead and did, I left it off um, just, to, just to show the miniature a little bit better on stream, right? A lot of, a lot of what I do when I'm painting on stream is, you know, quality of life for, uh, for you, the wonderful community. The lovely community. Like I said, we're all, we always consider ourselves just as much as a community as if we if we weren't working here. 
So let's kick up those highlights one more time. So it's super, super fun to hang out and be a part of that. Twigbeard, which MCP mini have you painted the most offline or on stream? Uh, I think not on stream. I've painted Spider-Man the most. Core box Spider-Man the most. Um, someday I'll take a picture of my MCP collection all lined up. Um, could be a lot of fun to show off. Uh, just how many different versions of stuff I painted. Um, on stream? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'd have to think of that one. Or go back to the records. Like... I don't know which one have I painted the most on stream. Is there anything I have not painted in Marvel Cards Protocol? No. Um, there's things I haven't finished yet. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I'm still working. I have two apartment buildings I'm still working on because I keep getting distracted by other projects. Um, but everything is being painted or is painted. Um, every single Marvel Cards Protocol miniature. Uh, even stuff that hasn't been released and um, is either painted or in the process of painting and multiples of many. Like, there's there's something I have three or four of. I can't remember what it is. I have two Wolverines and I definitely need to paint another Wolverine. And then I have an idea for another Wolverine. Uh, so I, I have... I think when all said and done, um, once I get get to everything, I, I just, I just, you know, there's only so many hours in the day, um, unfortunately. Um, I'll probably end up painting four, four Wolverines, I believe. Uh, da, 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 da. Any tips on if not good eyes to paint the face in a way it look like shadow? Yeah, I just I just take my darkest skin tone. If you're not gonna paint the eyes, take the darkest skin tone you have, and just blurp them into those eye sockets. Just the ocular, the ocular uh, sockets. Just 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 blurp it down in there. No one's gonna notice. No one's going to notice, you know, it, that goes back to the whole destiny of the miniature, right? Like choose the destiny of the miniature. Um, you know, if you're paying for a competition, you better learn to paint eyes. You, you just got to learn to paint eyes. Sorry. Um, if you're painting for yourself, if you're just painting for fun, if you're painting for the tabletop, um, you can just throw a little dark color into those ocular, um, recesses and it looks perfectly acceptable. All right, we're going to start framing with a little purple. Just like that. We'll start framing him up. You know, when it's like with you know with judging, you know, I, you got to really go over and look at it and analyze it. Um, so, if you don't paint the eyes, it's it's it will be scrutinized. You know, just like with all things, right? Like, you know, when you're painting for a tabletop, you just kind of have that instant like it just needs to look good and a snap, right? It's almost like a hot take, right? You, you 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 walk up to a table, there's some stuff painted at a tabletop level, and 
it's kind of like a hot take. It's just like, boom, yeah, that looks great. Um, and then under scrutiny, you start to like analyze it and and refine it and be like, oh, you know what? This is actually really good here. This is actually really good here, right? So, um, and you actually learn why the decision was made. A little more refining defines that up. Steady hands, thin paint, and a glass of. <laughs> yeah. Steady hand, you can learn steady hand. Um, steady hand doesn't have to be a trait that you inherently have. Learning how to steady one's hands, that's, that's true master level tricks. You know, pinkies together, elbows on a table, uh, proper posture, um, and, you know, making sure your diaphragm is open and stuff like that. Mm. Are we still talking about web palettes? I got distracted on other stuff. We can talk about web palettes. You want to talk about web palettes? We'll talk about web palettes. Let's talk about wet pots. Reveal soon. We just revealed a bunch. Insatiable. Insatiable. You gotta enjoy that cake you just got. You can't process. You can't process it all instantaneous. You gotta. You gotta slow down and chew your food. It's like I always tell my kid, too. It's like, you can't try anything t once, right? When you got a new food, you can't just taste it once and be like, I don't like this. You have to taste it, you have to taste it at least three times. Three times, because the first time you're fighting expectations, right? So I hand you uh, Brussels sprouts, which I, I love, actually. I love Brussels sprouts. Um, you get, you get you get Brussels sprouts for the first time. You just immediately like, nope, don't like. Uh, not fair. It's not fair. Um, you got to taste things twice. The first time you're fighting expectations, you're automatically you don't like it because it doesn't taste like a Hershey bar. You know, it doesn't taste like delicious. You know, ice cream. So you're like, well, I don't like Brussels sprouts. Second time, you're fighting your taste buds and and kind of like. You know, you you just you gotta refine the palate. So then you gotta taste it the third time, and then you can truly start to evaluate um, if you like something or not. You know, so sometimes the Brussels sprouts, you just gotta you gotta try things. A little more purple. I don't even taste stuff before I decide to not like it. Well, see, gooey tree, think of how many delicious foods. Think of all those delicious foods you could be missing out on. You know, metaphorically speaking. Time to bring in the purple on the cape. Gotta make the cape purple like a grape. Maybe, maybe, maybe Electra is the Brussels sprouts.
got to taste it three times before we give you something new. More purple on the cape. Kicking it up here and there with some purples. Purples and magentas are some of my favorite colors. Because they look so good. The brush was in my mouth and I could not articulate good. It was a, I think it came out sued. Looks so sued. This cave is so so awesome. I'm gonna sue it. I'm gonna take it to a high, uh, not high claims court. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I think the wet palette has the, the both both palette types has their advantage and disadvantage. It's all about finding what works for you. Um, I've been using my wet palette more and more over the over the years because I'm just I'm just throwing colors on miniatures at this point in my life. Um, I, I don't really believe in recipes. Um, you know, I can tell you, oh, I used two drops of red and one drop of blue, but that doesn't really mean anything. Um, I mean, it's still a good estimation, but it's not going to get you where you need to go. Um, for me, it's all about learning how to apply color and how to apply paint. Um, so that's kind of what I've been more focused on. Um, plus like something like a dropper bottle or, you know, no paint is accurate. You know, my dropper bottle might have a more clogged hole than yours. So I'm like, I use two drops. And what that really means is I drew, I, I, I dropped six drops. You just don't know. And even for our, for like army paintings, like, you know, if I'm painting like, you know, a squad of Marvel Christ Pokemon. I want them all to look the exact same. They don't need to look exact same. Those colors can be slightly off from each other, and no one will ever know. Trust me on this one. Trust me on this one. Uh, any updates on the AMG 3Box Challenger and Studio is going to be playing some games on Thursdays. I don't know when we will be back to Thursdays. Maybe, maybe BK and chat might have some information on that. I don't have that information currently. Um, 3Box Challenge, I don't have information on that either. I'm not, I'm not part of 3Box Challenge, so I don't have information on that. Sorry. Maybe BK does. We're just working more purples into our lovely purple cape here. Anyways, paint with your heart. Paint with jazz. TK, I'm a wet palette user, but dry palette, come oh, I don't. Oh, I live in Vegas, very dry environment. Yeah, the, the wet palette is really great for like those dry environments. Like it's all, it's all how you learn to paint. There's, there's amazing professional miniature painters out there that paint with like the worst brushes, the worst paints, and they're able to make it work. I mean, I, I always say I think Kirill Kanev could paint with ketchup and still, you know, be the greatest miniature painter in the world. Um, like, 
An artist doesn't blame their tools, and tools don't make an artist. I mean, this brush broke weeks ago, and I'm still using it. Whatever. Um, does, does Schick have a reputation for drinking paint water? I must have missed that. I feel like I'm out of the loop. Nobody tells me nothing. A little more purple. Adding a little white to it. I'm just binking on some highlights. Just right around that belt. <clears throat> good tool, yeah, Zorg Knack. Good tools can reinforce good habits. Not denying that one bit. The the purpose of the statement is to just even remind myself, like it's it's buying that new new tool is not gonna suddenly make me, you know, the greatest in the world. It, what's gonna make you the best is time, commitment, and the ability to to learn through failure. You know, you got to mess up, you know. Wise, wise man once said, sucking at something is the first step of being kind of good at something. You get one no prize if you know who that was. Boom, boom, play the separation anxiety OP event last month, and it was absolute blast. Props to the team for that. Yeah, that that's a lot of fun. Um, I know Josh had a lot of fun uh, when that came through, getting all those uh, different characters represented in that OP. Um, super exciting for us, you know. You got to add Shriek and all those other crazy symbiotes from the 90s. So, super, super neat uh, project. I know Josh loved it. And that, yeah, that OP gets a lot of fun. So, get your store to, get your store to reach out and contact uh, Asthma Day. Get that in and play that. It's a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Doing some little highlights on these purple boots. It's taking our time, having a good time. We're just here to paint some miniatures and hang out with Magneto. Or is it too obvious? Sorry, it was too obvious. Do it well, so honestly, the way I learn is watching streams like this or YouTube videos and try to mimic that technique. Uh, that is a very valid way to learn. Um, I've been told even if you go to art school, I didn't go to art school. Um, I've been told if you go to art school, you get to do uh, like, um, you do master studies. Um, I find those very, important um you know replicating things and then understanding why you know even in game design like um or any creative endeavor like it's sometimes it's you gotta sit down with it and try it and a couple times to understand the whys you know um so for painting you might see somebody paint with a color and you're like, why did they do that? Why did they put that color there? 
And then you have to do it a couple times and you can start to process and understand like what was the reason. Um, Gui Chu, yeah, absolutely. You have to understand the rules to know how to break them, 100%. Um, rules are not really rules when it comes to art. There's no rules in art. There's no such thing as cheating. Absolutely no such thing as cheating. Hang on, I need a drink. Um, but sometimes like those rules are like, uh, you know, they're, they're starting points and they're guides, and then you learn how to break those rules, and then that's when things get spicy. Uh, last question. No, what, is it the last question? We still got 10 minutes. Are there a good number of miniatures that were painted a while ago? Do you ever feel like you learned more, use a different thing like oil, and they would be worth a revisit? Um... It's a really good question. I don't revisit miniatures. I don't ever really go back and take a miniature out of my case and and be like, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this to it now. Um, I also don't strip miniatures. Um, once I paint it, I paint it. I'm a I'm a I'm a huge fan of having mile markers to my life, right? Like um, being able to look back on something and being like, that's what I painted in 2000, or let's let's go, how far back do we want to go? Manoggin. What? Monoggin. Monoggin, oh. How far back do we want to go? Like I can be like, this is what I painted in 91. This is how I painted in 96. This is how I painted in 2003. This is how I painted in 2012. This is how I painted in 2020. This is how I painted in 2022. Um, I like seeing that progression. I like, I like looking back on old stuff that's, you know, you can use the word not good, but I don't like, I don't like that phrase personally. Um, that's just, that's just what it was. It's not, it's not that it wasn't good. It's just, that's where I was. That's a marker to my life. That's a, you know, that's a, that's a smile line in my, you know, on the edge of my eye. That's a, that's a scar on the back of my hand, right? Those are all just moments of my life and my journey. And at the end of the day, your miniature painting is your journey. So I don't ever go back and revisit um, if I'm, so I've never gone back and just been like, well, now that I know how to use oil paint, I'm going to go back and I'm going to paint this thing for, that I didn't know how to use oil paints on. And I'm going to do oil paints on. I'll pick a whole new project and build, <laughs> and build a whole new army or squad around that technique. Cause it's all just my journey, you know. I'm just, just traveling through life, you know, learning and growing and trying new stuff, and you know, you know, basically always try Brussels sprouts. Constantly be trying Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts are an analogy, of course. The metaphorical Brussels sprout. All right, we've been spending so much time on this uh, red. I want let's let's put his uh. Skin tone. Oh, I totally, yeah, I, I, I'm not, yeah, still, I don't think I've ever just gone back and taken another shot at it. Like, it's always projects for me, I, you know? If, You know, I'll just start whole new projects and just apply all lessons to that new project. So let's use our little paintbrush and get a little flesh tone. You can get it on the helmet at this stage. Remember, we're going to refine and define.
like I maybe I'm not yeah, I don't think I've ever looked at something and been like, you know what? I'm I'm gonna do this like this. I mean maybe that's a that, maybe I should. Maybe I should look at my case and be like, you know what, I painted that thirty years ago. What would it look like if I paint it now? Because uh, for me, I'll just, I just like, I look at that stuff. And I'm like, that's how, that's the project I did in 98 when I was hanging out at my buddy Barry's house and we were playing, you know, playing every weekend. And, and that's what, that's what that looked like back then. And then if you're like, well, let's play the same game. I'd be like, sweet, I'm getting new. I'm going to get all new measures. I'm going to do, do it all up. And I'm going to apply everything to that and go forth and paint it different. It's just part of a journey. Part of a journey. Going through life. Making stuff up. Should we do a glaze? We only got four minutes. Let's do a little... We're going to use an ink-tense crimson. This year, I have heard a ton of people are using oils to challenge themselves, which is where that came from because it's such a different from standard paint to oil. I mean, yeah, if you've never used oil, like learning how is very interesting and fun. It's just another tool in the toolbox. Um, so, yeah, I could see where that could be exciting and different. And, like, you pick up some oil paints and... You pick the same miniatures you painted, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. And seeing what that looks like with new techniques being applied, that, that could be fun. That's not thin enough, but this red ink needs to be mega, mega thinned out. Like 10 to 1, 15 to 1. Yeah, look at that red now. That's what the, that's what glazes do for you right there. It's like a good rug. I mean, I guess in a way I'm kind of working on, eh. Look how red it is. Yeah, oils are great for army painting. You know, oil painting has been in miniatures for, oh, probably 20 or 30 years now, but it's just now catching on to like, how to apply it to like tabletop stuff. Um, it's also been interesting like watching um, the communities between uh, traditional miniature painting and um, uh, scale modelers kind of start crossing and sharing uh, technology. So it's, it's super interesting and fun to see that stuff, um, you know, I know Shik's talked about before. Um, I definitely started out with scale miniatures, scale you know scale models, not scale miniatures, but actual scale models, uh, building uh, you know cars and jets and such like that. And you know the the community around. That hobby has been innovating for a long time and developing techniques on how to apply weathering, how to apply, um, you know, panel lining and stuff like that. So reaching out to those crowds, um, actually, before I moved to Washington, I, I was hanging out 
every now and then with some scale modelers. Um, and literally just seeing how they were applying stuff and then I was applying it to miniatures. Because um, they have a lot of wonderful tools that you might not know about, right? Like, um, you know, you can use acrylic, not acrylic. You can use, like, graphite pencils to add weathering to, like, vehicles and stuff like that, you know. Um, my partner is a big fan of, uh, like, uh, pencils to add uh, uh, weathering and stuff like that. There's a lot of really good art tools out there that c can be applied. We're just putting a little green into his skin for the first shade. So there's all kinds of tools out there just at your disposal to uh, learn and grow and develop your, uh, your hobby skills. So don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to get out there and try new stuff. Once again, what did I just say, Summer? Always try the Brussels sprouts. Because you never know. You never know. You might be like, I don't like this. And I'll be like, well, you haven't really tasted it. And you're like, but I looked at it, and I don't like the look of the Brussels sprout. And I'm like, yeah, but have you tried it like this? And have you opened your mind to the possibilities? Like, open up your palate and try something out. See, you know, you never know. You just never know. There's a whole world of flavors out there. Metaphorically, artistically speaking. So go be bold. Go paint with bravery and an open heart and an open mind and you never know. You never know. Try new things. I hope I'm never like 120 years old being like, I'm glad I didn't try that new thing. I want to be like, I tried so many new things. Can you believe all the new things I tried? I'm kicking this bread up one more time before we go. We got... Oh, we're over. Boom! What are you going to do, Summer? Stop me? I was giving you time. Are you going to stop me? I was giving you time. I'm also giving you a two-minute warning now. No, I'm just getting a two-minute warning? Like, that seems rude. That I'm four minutes over, and now you're giving me a two-minute warning. She's, Summer's putting an end to the stream, so you, better, you got two minutes to ask all your questions while I finish this glaze. And really punch the red up on our magneto here. You're running out of time. I know. <laughs> whoa, whoa, BK, BK. I'll give you the exit song right now, but that means we're going to exit. If you ask a question, you will have to answer the question. But no one wants to ask the questions. So I guess we'll do the exit song. I'm just going to keep paint summer and you can take it out as we go. Uh, well, I got to say the stuff first. So remember every Tuesday, Wednesday, currently until uh, eventually we'll get back to Thursdays. You can join us here at Twitch at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, for um, um, Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. And check us out on Twitter and or Instagram. I'm staring at that camera now if you want. Uh, Twitter and or Instagram for all the latest news, information, and announcements coming from Atomic Mass about all your favorite games. So until next time, which will be next Tuesday, we'll see you later and go be the heroes you want to be. And now I'm going to sing the song about leaving. We painted up a magneto with some inks and he looks so super cool and dope. But he's not done, so I'm going to have to take him home and do